wanted to take a minute today to, to show you my Raspberry Pi Magic Mirror. I made a couple videos about it, I got a lot of good feedback, and people wanted to actually see how I built my Magic Mirror. If you don't know what they are, uh, I made a video about it, I'll link it up there in the card. Right now I'm going to show you my mirror, I'll show you the pieces, how you put it together, and what it looks like when you rip it off the wall. So, like I just showed you, this is my mirror hanging up here on the wall. And I just want to show you one cool thing. I have an app that, if you can see here, it actually controls the mirror. So, you can get a preview of the mirror if you want to by clicking on Magic Mirror. And you can see it loads up. And it's actually a live view of my mirror in a miniature version of my phone. But what we can also do with this is you can turn off the mirror which is what I'm going to do so I don't get electrocuted, right? Uh, so you can see the mirror's on, you press the power button, and in theory, it would shut down. Perfect. So now I'm not going to kill myself when I unplug this and pull it off the wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug from the bottom. And you can also see right here, what I did to hide a lot of the wires is I bought this stuff from Home Depot that you use when you're hanging your TV or hanging something where you want to hide wires on the wall and it all is encapsulated here in this little tube. That's what I did to kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So we're in the kitchen to get that clean feel. So when you take it off the wall. This is the mirror when you take it off the wall. Now, what everybody really wants to see and what a lot of people have been asking me is what does it actually look like in the back? Mine's actually a little bit messy. So I actually use a piece of like, uh, what do you want to call it? It's like quarter inch board you'd use on a, like a, a school project. And that's just covering the back for me. Um, I cut a hole in it to let a lot of the air circulate for the monitor. And what you can see right here is this is actually the circuit board for the monitor that's in, in here. When you put the monitor in here and you put the mirror over it, you, you trap the buttons, right? So you can't use them. So what I did was I cracked open the case on the monitor. I took out the circuit board and I left it exposed here in the back. So now if I ever have to turn off the mirror, and it was a little difficult before, um, or if you have to change the input because you want to do something different, I can still do it. Um, one small tip, after you take off the casing, you have no idea what the buttons do. So I used Sharpie to write in what the functions were. So you can see sort of here, there's a P for power, just so I know what everything is. When you pull this off, you gotta be gentle because I actually kept the buttons attached to this. This is what you're left with. There's really not a good way for me to show you the mirror and talk at the same time. So I'm gonna just walk you through the pieces and then we'll film over it and I'll show, I'll sort of point out uh, what I was talking about. This light is terrible. Let me go fix it, hold on. Okay. Sorry, I bought like one of these LED panel lights. Can you see these? And to be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trying to light our apartment. Uh, we have like two windows in the back over there and then there's no other natural light in the entire apartment. So I was trying to figure out a way to get some good light. If anybody has any really good tips on how to light a dark apartment with an LED light or I guess I need a box light, comment below. But back to the mirror. We have the back side of the monitor is what is exposed right now. So what I did was I wanted to make sure that I could take my Raspberry Pi on and off whenever I needed to so that if I wanted to update the mirror or something happened, I wouldn't have to like unscrew a lot of things, sort of like agitate what's on the back of the monitor. So what I did was, as you can see here, I actually have it Velcroed, pulled off, to the back of the monitor. So here it is. This is a Raspberry Pi case. You can see the little Raspberry Pi symbol. Uh, this is actually a case, the Raspberry Pi is in here, and I can go plug this into a monitor, plug it into a keyboard, and I can log on to the Raspberry Pi if I have to do any serious work. So this has been really convenient for me, so that's probably one of my biggest tips when you're building this mirror, is you want to buy a box for your Raspberry Pi, and then make it portable, right? I used Velcro, I'm sure there's a lot of other, like a bracket you could make, whatever, but just try to make it portable. You can see the top comes off, the motherboard there and the pins exposed. They call these GPIO pins, I think. This is everything that powers your mirror. Um, really the most important thing next to the computer is 
one of these that I can't get out. Son of a... This is like impossible. It's childproof. There we go. Finally. So, while the mirror powers everything else, the little micro SD chip here is the brains behind the entire operation. So the Raspberry Pi runs on a micro SD. This is a 32 gigabit. You probably don't need that much power. Um, I bought 32 gigabytes because I thought it would add a lot more images to the Raspberry Pi. I'd add a lot more data. But in reality, the Magic Mirror is a persistent web page, right? It's just HTML and CSS, and it just uh, continually refreshes, right? It's like every five seconds, or every three seconds. You might have seen my other video where I talked about the Magic Mirror, right? I said that there are four basic parts to it. You have the Raspberry Pi, the two-way Magic Mirror, the frame, and a monitor. And if you look here, this is all very, very basic. You have the monitor here. The only difference that you might notice is there's no there's no plastic frame, right? You have that like nice black coating when you buy a monitor. You have to crack all that off so that you have a lot more space. Then you have the frame here. This is just pine. It's nothing special. I stained it. I bought the pine at a lumber yard here in Manhattan. I have these hooks here that I also bought at the hardware, local hardware store. I think they hold 30 pounds each. I think the entire build probably weighs somewhere around 20 pounds, maybe 30 pounds. So hopefully this whole getup here holds 60, which is a lot of overkill, but it's important that this thing doesn't just break off wall and smash into a million pieces. It's seven years bad luck when you break a mirror, but when you break a magic mirror, it's seven times as bad. So you get like 49 years bad luck if you smash your magic mirror. So that's just a fair warning for everybody who's thinking about building one. You can frame it however you want. I just didn't really have the tools or the knowledge. I brought it to a frame shop here in New York and they just sort of built like, I guess, a little chassis that attached the monitor to the frame. Uh, I just wrote this little arrow here so I knew which direction the magic mirror goes. So when I hang it and when I add these brackets, I didn't screw something up. I know tech guys are all about keeping their things really clean. I did my best, but uh, this is just the HDMI cable that plugs the monitor into Raspberry Pi. I tried to wrap it up and glue it to the monitor. It didn't really work, um, but I don't need that much space in here, so it didn't really matter. That's pretty much it. That's my magic mirror build. It looks complex when it's hanging on the wall, but when you pop off the back here, you see that it's really just the Raspberry Pi. You hang it up, you plug it in, you turn it on. My biggest tip, if you want to build one of these, and I'll post all my materials and all that stuff in the description, but if you want to build one, you go to magicmirror.builders. There's this guy, Michael T. I can't pronounce his name. He's from the Netherlands. Sorry, Michael. And magicmirror.builders is an incredible resource. People post uh, different modules they want to make, like the weather or, you know, news. They post their projects. They show you what they did with their Magic Mirror, and some of the stuff is fascinating. Uh, it's a community where people will help you out if you have problems, if your mirror is not working, if you're new to this type of thing. This is the place to go where people will really help you. If you're thinking about making one, go for it. It's an easy project. I know it looks complex. It takes very little knowledge of coding and computers, and there's a community here to help you. So if you guys decide you want to make one of these, good luck with your build. And if you make one, put it in the comments below so we can all see what you came up with. And if you like these videos, don't forget to hit like and tap the subscribe button. One more thing is, can you deal with that?